Thank you for purchasing Sage Estimating Extended or Standard with Sage 100. My name is Jim Davis and I am the Estimating Specialist for Alliance Solutions Group. The purpose of this video is to show you how to set up the interface between the Sage Estimating Extended or Standard with Sage 100. The first thing you're going to need to do is go to your Sage 100 product. Go into the utilities and set up a security group. This is typically done by the accounting administrator. There will need to be a group created for API. This is the interface between the two products. Once that group is created, you will need to set up the estimators as users of the API group. So as you can see here, I have a Davis set up. I put them in a group estimator PM because they do have some rights to the project management product. And I gave them the second group of that API. You want to save that. Once that is done, you'll need to go to your estimating tools. Estimating tools is a way to fix corrupted data, uh, fix different pieces and parts within an estimate, and also we'll be able to change the interface to a Sage 100 interface from here. So in estimating tools, you go to setup, change job cost information. Once you're there, you'll want to go to your C drive, users, public, estimating. This is the default location for your estimating databases from Sage. It is not necessarily where the database will be if you decided to load it somewhere else, but it is the default. Once here, you will grab the database that you want to convert. For this uh, particular demo, we'll just grab this construction and masonry database, and you want the PEI folder. That is the database folder. Double click on it. The change job cost information window opens up. And you can see it's defaulted to Sage Timberline Office. Here's where we will change it to the Sage Master Builder, which is Sage 100 interface type. This question mark in the Sage Estimating Tools and Estimating itself is a field sensitive question. So if you wanted to come over here and click on this, you can see what that is for. This would determine if the job cost phase codes have the same format as phases in estimating. Typically that is not the case. It may be, but it's typically not the case. And we can say that we want to add the job cost cost categories to items also. You will also want to justify to the right because that is the default justification for the Sage 100 import file. Say OK. Now this process is updating the new job cost information in the standards file. This takes somewhere between 30 seconds and a minute. It will update all the phases, the categories, the items, um, and the database itself. Uh, the items don't continue a lot of uh, data for this particular piece, but it goes through the entire database and updates itself. Once it's updated, you can close this information. If you'd like to save the audit information, you can. And we'll go out to the Sage Estimating product. Just switch over to the correct database now. So, Estimating. And we use this one right here. One of the things it's going to um, look for in the database itself, once we are opening it up here, says not responding, but it actually is, as you can see the circle going around there. We can go into our database settings. Uh, typically on the this address book, we'll just leave it blank. Um, if we flip over to the job cost information, though, you'll notice that we now have a Sage Master Builder, and we have our company interface. When you first come into this, this information will not be there, so you will have to select the data drive you are associating it with. 
So where is that Sage 100 information? Once you have selected the data drive, you will be able to select the company. And then enter the new username and password for that particular user. When we've gone to this point right here, we're going to want to refresh this data. This allows it to connect to the Sage 100 and import all those contacts, the uh, phases, and the cost codes, and the categories. Once again, it says not responding, but it is. So I apologize for that, but that's my computer. So now we have refreshed the data. I will close this and we will look at a database item. So the items in the database you purchased are already set up to interface with a Sage 300 type product. The cost codes were not predefined by anything in a particular Sage 300 setup. They're just there for demonstration purposes. So what we'll need to do is go to the job cost tab and you'll see that we have an item, we have a category, and a quantity to job cost and a job cost category. So if we look right here, if I click the drop down, I am now looking at my Sage 100 cost categories, my cost, my phases. So we can go through here and we can just select what we need to select and put it on the item. We can also select the category that it goes with for, for subcontractor and say OK. We have now updated that database item permanently so that anytime we use it, it will know where to send the data in the Sage 100 item. This is the slowest way to do something in the system. The next way to use it would be to go into your database editor, which I can do for you real quick here. right here. The key to database editor, if you see I have my estimating open right now and I have a, a particular database associated with it, if I try to open that database in the database editor while it's open inside of the estimating, it will not let me do that. So when we come in here we will do file, open database, and just so you can see how that works, we'll go to our extended construction masonry and double click on that and you'll see that it says it's in read only mode so we'll just close that out and I will open up another database that I have also converted and we'll go right here to this one it's not open so it will allow me to open database editor if you have not seen it yet is a place for you to go to do a lot of updating at one time it brings it into somewhat of an Excel format instead of having to go item to item. They're all listed in one place for me to review. You can sort this any way you want. You can show all columns, all categories. So you'll see that I have my phase, my item, temporary fence. And if we scroll across, you'll notice that there's labor information. It's all grayed out because there wasn't any labor. Here's material information. And on that particular one, remember, it was a subcontractor. So if we look down here, you're going to notice that I have a subcontract phase. That is the one I just set up. Okay? So I could conceivably just highlight every one of these items right now and tell this to fill down, updating all those items that quickly. So this is a much quicker way to do things. It's not necessarily the way I would recommend doing it, but it is a great place if you want to just go in, update your database, your pricing very quickly. The last way and kind of the easiest way if you don't have a lot of time to go in and update a lot of things very quickly is to actually use the estimating program to your advantage. So we'll just start a new estimate here, and we'll just call this Sage 100. Nope, oh, sorry. 100 interface. We'll just give that as the estimate name. So it's creating a new estimate. I won't go into too much details on creating a new estimate because you will get that in your training. So all the details of the estimate, we'll just close this, start a new estimate. 
Now, if you look at my spreadsheet here, this spreadsheet can look any way you want, but one of the main aspects is checking off this update database on any spreadsheet you create. What that allows me to do is as I am doing a takeoff, and we'll just throw a couple items on here real quick. Spread those out. Put some information. You'll notice that I have quantities, material price. So let's just say I'm updating my material price or updating my labor job cost code. And you'll be able to tell which ones have been updated and which ones haven't just by looking at the cost code itself. Because if we go in here and we switch this, you'll see that we have a different cost code structure. So I just updated that one. You can see how it's justified when I grab the right cost code, bring them over. We have this button right here that says Update Database. So what this is going to do is allow me to update my database from my estimates. So we're updating the items as we use them instead of having to update it all up front. And the way this happens is after you're done with your estimate, you can go into this update database, update from estimates, and it'll bring you to another screen just to make sure you didn't accidentally click anything and ask you what you want to update. So in this particular case, we're just going to go in here and say, I want you to update the labor, so we're in the labor, job cost code. Say OK. So that's what it's going to update in our system. Creates a PDF just for us to know what we've done. And it, two items updated. Say OK. So now if we actually look at this item in our database, you'll notice that we have updated our item. And just the job cost phase, not the, uh, the labor, not the material. That's how easy it is to update your database. I hope this gets you started with the system, get your Stage 100 and your estimating interface. If you have any more questions, please do not hesitate to call us. Again, my name is Jim Davis, and our contact information is on the screen. Thank you. Have a great day.